hello. Welcome back to Monster Train. Uh, shall we? I Oh yeah, I've been... I'm gonna actually go ahead and show you the run history. I didn't do it in the last two episodes, but I'll show you how last night went. It was a little, uh, it was a little cleaner. Had, uh, had three wins. I was really hoping this run was gonna come to be a victory right here, so that we would be on a three win streak, and then maybe we win this first run, and then on the streams, and then I didn't go for five. However, it was not meant to be, uh this run right here it was a really interesting loss to me because i had i had all the pieces right we had a crucible collector on the top floor we had two large stone endless titan sentries and i had a sweep spell weakness tethys and i had a a few good spells to kill off the heavies and then what happened was titan sentry on the bottom floor gets chunked to five hp he gets killed without triggering his frostbite at all and then on the second floor, the other Titan Sentry had taken some damage, and he got killed. I didn't draw any any outs, and Tethys died as well. And Tethys was my heavy killer, because I was doing spell weakness and then just killing off the heavies with spells. And from that, I just got stepped over by the heavies, unfortunately. It was it was a really interesting loss, because a lot of the times when I lose a, uh, like a, a run like that, it's because, oh, I made some sort of, like, major misplay or something like that. And that one was just like, hey, maybe I shouldn't have made my sharks take that much damage, right? Maybe I should have kept them a little lower on the health so that Tethys can always kill heavies. Because I don't need the super high health sharks. If they just die in a single round, they've done their job. And then I can bring them back. They'll always have it at least enough to kill the backliners. It was the Sap Seraph, if you were wondering. It was the uh, 15 times 2 boys. Really interesting run. We had some really fun runs as well. I will be exporting. I've got like two runs from the stream I'm planning on bringing over here to the YouTube for uh, for some good stuff. But anyway, let's begin here. We got Ritual of Battle, we got Draft, we got Tiresome Climb. These cards, I mean, Draft is fine because he's basically just drag, but he costs one and he goes away a lot faster. Ritual of Battle, <laughs> and Tiresome Climb's cool. Let's begin, shall we? We got, we got Boon of the Blacksmith and Tempered Talisman. Boon of the Blacksmith I've been respecting a lot more lately, but going from 2 to 5 damage on Torch makes it relevant through the entire game. It always kills backline. I never have to go like, oh, I need to remove this by a certain point, which I kind of like. However, we're hopefully going to have a better answer to killing backline than Torch in the late game. And Boon of the Blacksmith, I've been I've been coming around on it quite a bit, right? Bringing this up to 35 makes it kill heavies in two hits on the first section. Bringing it up to 45 makes it kill heavies in three hits instead of four. It essentially saves you one damage if ever a full health heavy gets by you. It's an interesting choice. I think that I will take the magic power plus three because we can put that on vent. Or we can combo that with vent and I won't need the plus ten. Mm, and a slay plus ten hornbreaker prince. Let's go. Hell yeah, my favorite Hornbreaker Prince. I have a lot of people who tell me they like the Wrathful one a lot more, and I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to understand your love for the Wrathful Prince. Uh, this combat, I'm not afraid of taking a plus four because we have torches, we have Tiresome Climb, we can definitely set our Prince on the top floor and pick off most of the wave before it gets up there. So that the only enemy that has plus, the only the only thing that really needs to be worried about is this protector, but, you know. Now, I think we'll set up on the middle floor, because I want to be able to set a train steward and a drag. So that we can have a train steward hopefully at full health ahead of the final round. Ah, or not, because of the draw. However, Ritual of Battle lets me get that first slay in there. Alright. It's not bad. I'm feeling feeling okay about this run. It's, it's very early to tell you how I feel about this run, but also like I'm feeling okay about this run. As it sits. I could? Oh wait, I just fucked up. I played both of those. Whoops. Alright, I'm actually feeling terrible about this run. I for some reason thought this card only cost one. Alright, I actually have Throne. Well, that's a mistake, let's tell you. That's not the way you want to play this one out now, is it? I would argue that that was not a good outcome on, on the whole. I'm also going to take 18. Alright. We get to learn from our mistakes. Our mistake here was, whoops, I forgot to make sure I didn't kill my Hornbreaker Prince. <laughs> it's it's the first run of the day, you'll forgive me. I'm still still shaking off the rust. That's, that's a mistake that I, I, I mean, I made so many Hornbreaker Prince related mistakes lately, I feel like. Been really uh, doing that a lot. Yeah, it's just, he's gonna kill me. That's fine. 
it happens. You know, I don't, I don't uh, stress runs like this too much. It was cool and all, but I mean, definitely you play that run with a little more tact and you come out of it okay, right? If I don't take the trial, we come out of it okay, and also if I just set up on the top four, we come out of it okay. Or uh, just tiresome climbing. Actually, no, because when you look at it, the only play that saves my Hornbreaker Prince there is tiresome climbing him to the top floor. Which wasn't a very obvious play initially to me. Because as you look at it, there's no way to kill and stop or stop all three of them. Interesting. Okay. Hidden Passage, Whiplash, Impish Scholar. Cool. Hidden Passage is a really nice card to start with. Sketches. Oh, we're having one of these. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. I'm not used to him being... I, I feel like I've played a lot of uh, Slay... Slay less runs. Runs without Slay. I'm gonna take Spikes 3 here. So, with... I mean, my, my planning here is not that important, right? Oh yeah, like it sucks because we pull out the dregs, but also in these early sections of this combat, it's just gonna, it's gonna be fine that we pull out the dregs, right? We're going to remove them as fast as we can in the train stewards as well, and we're going to add some things in. But I'm not going to... I'm basically, I'm not planning on uh, building this run around this sketches build right now. Eventually I will. However... Huh. I put a drag here? Oh, hang on, how does this work? I put a drag here. They both die. But now Hornbreaker Prince gets, gets a slay. And this guy doesn't go through. It's a, it's a weird one. I guess the alternative play is to torch this collector. That's the other way you can play that one and come out of it the same. Where Hornbreaker Prince gets his first slay. And I guess I save a drag. But I think this way is better because I get rid of a drag. Yeah, also starting with an imp makes this a little worse. I would argue. Imps don't like sketches of salvation. But you know. It's cool. I feel as though we can make this work. Thanks, Hidden Passage. Very cool. And the transfer goes up here and we'll walk out of this combo. I, I've never taken sketches in this capacity, right? We've never... I've never done it like this where it's, oh yeah, we have sketches as melting and I'm just going to use it to thin out the deck early on. Alright, so we don't want to take any imps. We'll take Fortify. Very much want to stay at- what the hell? Formless Child? What? Wait, that's weird. Ima wait a minute, what are you doing here? You're a rare. But, like, imagine this getting pulled off of sketches, right? It just, like, <laughs> remakes one of the dregs that dies? That sounds terrible. What if I took Resin Removal? Like, what a weird first clan pack, right? These are all not very good. I'm gonna skip it. Formless child in the first clan pack, though. What am I doing? I'm throwing. Could have had that. Alright, so remember that whatever unit we take has a chance of just being played in the middle floor randomly. I don't hate putting Wickless Baron in this right now. If he gets played in the middle floor, cool. If he doesn't, also fine. I'm gonna throw a little rage. Give him a, give, give him a plus 5, plus 10. I think this should be okay. I don't really feel the need to reroll or buy the quick here. This run's probably gonna go... Uh, to pieces real quick. Realistically, if you're playing this game and you're like, ooh, I get sketches, you probably don't want to take it if you're melting. But, because the randomness is like, oh yeah, sometimes it just spawns my other units, right? Like, I, hey, I don't know if I want this with those Baron up here. Great question, do I? I don't know. It's gonna be fine for now, but it's hard to put something in front of my champion, which gets kind of weird, right? The champion having train sewers in front of him is not an ideal outcome, I would argue. But, I don't know. Sketches is fun. If it only ever hit, like, the dregs or the the train stewards, it would be better, honestly. And I guess with two hidden passages, we could just be, like, ascending everything into this floor. Huh. Like, I could do this, right? I could have this be a play I make more often as well, where we just make this floor a massive floor. I think if I ascended the drag first, I'd kill the 5-1. Yeah. No. No, he... No, he wouldn't. What do you... I don't know. It's strange. Whiplash this boy. And... Yeah, I want you to die. This is all fine. 
Okay, maybe the plan here is to just like, everything that I can't fit on this floor, I just ascend in there. I wonder if that's the way we go about this one. Kinda interesting. I don't know if I want to ascend Hornbreaker Prince into this floor. What I really want to do is I want to get some removals in here, right? We really want to get some money. We want to remove all of these drags, all of these train stewards, everything must go. He dies, the boss dies, it's fine. Molting Imp. Unfortunately, I have no openings in my build for Imps presently. Fatal Melting? Nah. Remnant Host? Hey, this kind of goes well with, uh... <laughs> yeah, I can see this. Because we have the Harvest Boy, right? This guy triggers Harvest three times. Sure, get in here, buddy. Why not? Sometimes that'll be good, I think. We, we kind of want to go to the Hellhorn banner here. I want to find a good Hellhorn unit in here, like Demon Fiend. Yeah. Now, obviously, if I don't hit him off of sketches, he's unplayable, but, you know. What are you going to do about it? So if the Diligent does mean we want to take the Ember Stasis, of course. Oh, yeah. And then... Behind this door number three, we have... Drumroll, please. Endless. Plus 25. Plus 25 in the Baron isn't bad, but that's only if he is in the front. Uh, I'm just going to roll this shop. Multi-strike. Yeah, I want multi-strike on... Probably on the Demon Fiend. You know, this is a long term, but... Yeah, hey, you know what? Give me it on the Demon Fiend. We have a lot of stuff to remove, but if he gets landed on the middle floor, it kind of goes insane. If, if you, This run's looking a little familiar, isn't it? If we don't die to Daedalus here, we can kind of get out of control with this. There's a great case to be made for purging cards. We have nine, uh, we have ten units that need to be purged from this deck before we can even really think about it. Yeah. Sometimes this happens, right? The, the downside of Demon Fiend, of course, is sometimes this happens. But it's okay, right? I'm expecting this to happen. He's just here because he's a good fat boy unit, and I hope I don't die to Daedalus. We'll see though, right? Because it's a little awkward overall. A little awkward. I think if those guys despawn, like if you don't kill them yourself, they actually will... Uh, they will not trigger Harvest, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I did- no, I should have let this guy go up, right? Because Harvest and Slay. Weird. We're steadfast in our calling. Hmm. Whatever you say, lady. Ember actually does a lot here. Killing one of those is very nice. And even if these waves get by you, right, it's not that much damage you take overall. I need to farm health on this- on this boy so that he can, uh, tank enough rounds for Wickless- or for Hornbreaker Prince, right? And if I, if I play this card, I will get a slay. And that first slay, as I often say, is maybe the most important one. So we will play it out like this. I think we actually want to hold the drag? No, because I'm going to play Remnant Host up there next round. Because now that he's gotten this first slay in, he'll kill every heavy that comes up here with the help of Wickless Baron. Right? Yeah. Interestingly enough... Do I want to play Remnant Host here? Ah, that's a great question. Because he's going to steal... If I play Remnant Host, he does steal the the Slay, does he not? What, does he? No, he only does 20. This is 35. So he doesn't, actually. Wait, this is... This is... Because it's... No, it's 40. Sorry, it's two drafts, and they both do 20. So it's 40 damage. Oh, I feel a sneeze. Please hold. I feel it. Don't tease me. Maybe, maybe I don't feel a sneeze. Uh, here's the play, by the way. We put Remnant Host here, and then we Hidden Passage this guy up for the Hornbreaker Prince, right? So, you you die. I mean, I should have talked this out before I did this, but you attack, this explodes, killing you, and then I believe you kill the... No, you don't kill the front draft, because they have 5 health. You hit the front draft. The drafts attack, dealing 40 damage. They do not spawn with dazed any units that are summoned through effects like this, or if you ascend them to the floor, it's only when you play them on that floor. They enter. The enter keyword means when you play them down. This summon does not work that way. So they will get to make their move. They'll do their 40 damage into this Forge Disciple. You kill the Forge Disciple, you kill the clergyman. I believe. I believe. You guys down here. Let's see if I'm correct. I am correct. And then we get all of that harvest as well. 
that play, like playing that turn out like that is probably important so that I always get my, like so that I have enough everything for Daedalus here. I believe it's important to do that turn properly. Uh, for you. And if I, if I ascend this guy, if I ascend this guy, I'll take one free damage most likely. Do I have any consumed cards? No. I will ascend this guy. I think I take one damage for ascending him, but it's okay. Because that's like, that's, that's a round against Daedalus that we freed up, essentially. That's one extra hit versus Daedalus. I believe. And I can't quite get you down to uh, 23, unfortunately. So I'm taking this one damage to hopefully clean up the Daedalus combat. It may have been unneeded damage. We will see. We will see. Nice. Yeah, as it turns out, uh, ascending that guy and taking the one damage. You know, this is, again, this is the level of micro that we didn't need to do, right? But I think it's right to take that one damage, because there's worlds where I don't hit this ember. But it, without the ember, it's like we win exactly. Like, the last possible round, we win. So... You can make the case, though, that he would have gotten an extra 10 damage, so it would have equated to about the same because he would have lived four rounds. Look, I don't want to hear it. Don't don't tell me these things I don't want to hear. That's too much thinking for me. How do I feel about Memento Mori? Hmm. Maybe not bad. Because we're going to have a bunch of guys dying on the middle floor. I mean, you need like 10 units to die for this to start to really amp up. Uh, probably like five units need to die for this to amp up. Eh, I'm gonna skip it. Remnant Pact. Good Endless. C okay, Remnant Pact plus Impish Scholar. We endlessly respawn the Impish Scholar. And that brings back uh, Remnant Pact. And I could just put Endless on every- that sounds really bad. I could put the Endless onto the Remnant Host. And then just endlessly it gives uh, plus three plus nine to Wickless Baron. Sure, let's try that. The card isn't bad. Hmm. We don't need anything here. Remember, this is a uh, this is a sketches build. Don't forget which fell. Whoops. Which fell? Ah, spell shield fell. So I can take draw. I should take energy there just to be safe from the demon fiend. But like, come on. Why take energy when I'm just gonna have sketches work? Like, it's really like it's a waste, honestly. Just have your sketches work, right? Like, why why take energy when you could just have sketches work for you? That's my plan here, anyway. And, like, in reality, if one of those Demon Fiends gets played, it's, like, it's solid. Tycoon would generate me a lot of money, but we need to not add anything else to this deck. If one of those Demon Fiends gets put in the middle floor, we probably win the round. So, that's the situation. Uh, if I take spikes, how bad is it? Really bad or absolutely fine, depending on which, if one Demon Fiend lands on the middle floor. Which is not likely currently. I'm not thinking it's worth it for the artifact. Maybe for the money I would go for it. Alright. Look at that. See? Free. Hello, Streamlabs crashed on me there. So. We're back now. Uh, sorry about that minor break. Thanks, Streamlabs. Very cool. It's alright. We're back in it, boys. We got the Demon Fiend spawned on the middle floor. He's gonna pretty much solo carry this entire combat. I'm pretty sure that there is, like, he just kills everything. Yeah, and so if I had taken the energy, I guess we could have... Yeah, yeah, okay. I should take energy at some point in this run. I'm very resilient, or resistant to it for some reason. Don't ask me why, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I'm thinking about this turn and like, hmm, what do I want to do here? In reality, it doesn't matter. This Demon Fiend is just going to kill everything. He just, he wipes everything out. This is the only enemy that he doesn't uh, wipe out. So if we just send her. Or I guess him. I don't really know. And we get a free kill onto the Hornbreaker Prince off of this as well. Look at that. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure he'll just like solo this combat. He spawned in a really good position because he had two train stewards put in front of him to tank. Like, honestly, this was about as good as it could have been. If I'm being real with you here. 
Just start working on killing you. I actually did it. I put Endless on the Remnant Host to farm more Harvest Triggers on my Wickless Baron. Imagine if that was the only portion of my plan. Imagine if that was the whole game plan. How terrible things would be. Plus five and burn out too, so you'll burn out right on time. I, I feel like if you want to make Remnant Host better, just make enhancements that you put on the tomb carry over to the drafts, and then this card is actually pretty strong, I think. I think at this point we just want to send you on up, right? I guess I do because I won't be drawing another Ascend. Well, well yeah, as we draw six cards, there's two Ascends, we'll be drawing two out of uh, 12. Yeah, just send you up. We won't get to play another Remnant Host out of this, but like, who cares? And I'll send you up as well, actually, so that this guy just dies. Yeah. I could have split the guy off. Either way. Doesn't make a big difference, I don't think. I think we come out of this one. Yeah. A-OK, -okay, however you play that one. No matter how you slice it, I think that one ends up being alright. We got the Collector. Everything's looking okay here. An interesting run. March of Shields is really nice for a Sketches setup like this, because you can shuffle your units around to have who you want in front. Intent on Death. I mean, this weird Remnant Host splash is kind of cool, but for, don't forget that this is a Sketches build. Don't be uh, forgetful of that fact. I'm going to just start spam removing here. This is three free energy on the first turn. Yeah, we can take it. Better than chest plates. All right. I am going to spend all of my money removing. Unfortunately, this means that Wickless Baron is probably going to end up in the middle floor at some point, but, you know... That's okay. For a new... I mean, I guess our end game here is... Uh, Wickless Baron, Remnant Host, Demon Fiend, Demon Fiend, and then we can order that properly. This Imp needs to go. But, like, we're, we're closing in on it. We need five more card removals. If I hit here and we get a money trial, we can come pretty close. Alright, so we'll have it post-fell, I think. And for now, we have a pretty high chance of hitting at least one Demon Fiend. And even if we don't... If we draw one on the first turn, it'll still be fine. Random artifact or multi-strike. No. I think that we're weak right now and we don't want to slam trials that don't give something I really want. And what I really want right now is money for more removing. Yeah. Like, sometimes you see this, right? Thankfully, that's why I took Hell's Banners, right? We get to still play Demon Fiend and it is A-OK. -okay. Right, this floor is absolutely fine, but occasionally it looks like this on your start, where you go Imp, Drag, Drag, Baron, right? And if I didn't take the Hell's Banners there, we would have lost, but the reasoning was, obviously, if I whiff on everything else, I can still at least get the Demon Fiend out, because if, if I pull everything else, I will be guaranteed to hit Demon Fiend. Because you have to draw one of your non-starters in your opening hand. I kind of want to wait, because as I look at it, right, this is just free energy if it's endless. Well, when it dies, it becomes free energy, I guess I should say. We can get some armor, some armor. We're gonna smack... Like, I, I want these things to die. Go we'll play it like this. Don't need to think too hard about it, right? You can see, with six draw and the sketches, we burn through this deck really quickly. We're almost done with our first cycle already. Oh, well, I could just send this guy up, right? Why not? Why keep him down here? Hmm. Interesting. I think I think we will keep him down here for now. I want to wait to try to farm a little more health out of him. Or not a little more health. I want to wait and try to farm... Yeah, I want to farm a little more health and then put him in the back. And then maybe March of Shields him to the front. So we want to try and get like an Endless onto the Remnant Host here, basically. This is the way to go about that. And then I'll just kill these two guys. Why not? Oh, hey, I guess I didn't quite... I just assumed that thing would die. I didn't look at it, though. Don't make assumptions, I suppose. Okay, you can just go. Good work, my man. I didn't manage to endless the remnant host, but it's alright. Oh, yeah, I have no great answer to the stealth here, do I? I guess this is my greatest answer. Move him to the front. And Remnant Host will give me like two rounds out of it if I... I don't want to ascend though. If I ascend her I can get two rounds out of it with Remnant or... No, I only get one round out of it anyway. It's fine. 
Oh, you do get that energy. And since it dies, I get to have six energy. Oh, and that gives me this demon fiend. Hey, look at that. Uh, so is it better to ascend this demon fiend, do you think? I think not. Well, I guess it's the same health either way. You slice it, right? It's just a matter of if it's the health of this demon fiend down here. So he, if I if I leave him here, he gives me four rounds. Which will bring this guy down to two stealth. If I bring him up, I think it's better to leave him down here. Sorry, buddy. Two stealth? I thought it was two stealth. I guess it's three. Works a little differently than I thought. That's fine. You come out of it fine either way. Just a little strange overall. I'm very lucky I got this Hell's Banner. That's definitely kept me in this run where I should have otherwise lost the run. I got very lucky with this Hell's Banners for sure. But, you know. You can also not greed for draw. Like I did. Because that was greed. You should have taken should take energy there always. But I greed. I think it's better to keep the drags in than the Impish Scholar right now. Do I have enough for one more removal, or is it 240? It's 180. Hell yeah. We're down to uh, six units, which means I'm almost guaranteed to hit a Demon Fiend here. I should hit at least one on the middle four. If not two. And then we just need to stack some armor on them somehow. Let's see it. Ah, we hit one. It's fine. Both drags a demon fiend. And I can also just, like, ascend the other one in there, huh? Like this. Now, the thing- the weird part of it is, uh, what do I do with my remnant- or my homebreaker prince here? Because on the one hand, I just want to put him on the middle floor. On the other hand, uh, he doesn't fit. If I slap him down here, I'm banking on hitting the other hidden passage, or remnant pact, or engulfed in smoke. I guess it's fine to slap him down here. Put a remnant host in front to take the hit for him. He also gets a slay out of it. And now I'm just banking that I find an answer to how do I keep him alive, but there's a lot of answers to that. And I can't, obviously I can't put him on the top four because he will not uh, survive. Yeah, look at that. Excellent. And now if we, if we ever get to hold this card over, it just kind of goes insane, right? Like, this floor kills everything. This is a lot of damage. I think we'll put an endless... I mean, what do I, I can't really make a good use of this, but this is fine. Put endless here. Nice. What a strange setup, right? But look at this. This is kind of cool. And then... I'm going... I want the... Baron to have all the armor. 120, so right now you die, so even if I give you 20 more armor, you still die from this Demon Fiend's hit, right? Because it's uh, 116 here, and then this guy's doing 166, you're at 120, 130, 140, it always ends the same. Cool. Cool, cool. And I guess we'll just start torching Fel. I mean, okay, so here's the real question. Can I get a slay out of this if I give you more armor? Right now you're at... So, I, to get a Slay out of this, I need to get you above, to the point where this Demon Fiend has to hit post hits on you. You're currently at 140. It's, I need to get you above one, I mean, I don't think I can, right? I'm pretty sure no matter how, how you slice it, the second hit of this guy kills both of them, yeah. I need to give you like three more armors for that to work. Two more armors, but still. Close. It was worth considering. Same consideration. Uh, same answer. Hornbreaker Prince doesn't get many slays, they're all gonna get taken by the demon fiends, and that's okay. Actually, if I had just if I could have given her Is it I guess I could have gotten there, I think, actually. You look at it now and you go, oh yeah, you could have gotten there. I suppose. This combat, or this round can be a little scary. But like once we get this engulfed in smoke off the ground, it starts to go insane. And we just need to remove a few more things. The problem, of course, is our money has all gone to uh, other circumstances, shall we say. I have not been placing my money into smart investments, perhaps, you could argue. I would disagree, of course, but still. My money has all gone to this, uh, the removals to make this deck more consistent. And it's, it's like, it's almost there, honestly. Are you actually going to hit me twice? What? 
You've been gifted so much armor, I have to torch you so you don't hit me twice. That's crazy. Like, stealth armor stacking on this guy is actually really strong. Like, the stealth armor stacking, he's getting... He's not taking any health damage, and he's just harvesting like crazy. My man's a 7654. He's kind of crushing it up here, I gotta say. Now, we're gonna need to make sure... I, I, keeping these torches in is important for the sake of Seraph the Diligent. Yeah, look at this. Clean. Goodbye, Fel. It's all about the setup, though. There's variance in this deck because of sketches. If we can make the setup cleaner, things become a lot nicer. Two damage because one sycophant snuck by me. Crazy. Reinforce or alloy? Reinforce can work out here. Yeah, I think this card works out. Alloy's also good, but I think this will be typically worth more at the end of the fight as a big payoff. It's all about the setup, right? If I just add more draw to this deck, it gets better. I mean, the energy is not a factor anymore. I always have to draw one of these Demon Fiends. As I remove more cards, energy becomes less and less useful. However, this is Seraph the Diligent, which means it's going to be curses. We're going to be taking at least one curse per round. I do need to keep that in mind. Uh... A good thing to keep in mind. Huh. That's a good question. Uh, Fowl's Remorse or Herschel's Compound here? It's never Seraph. Don't even, don't even get me started. It's never this. I think it's one of these two. I, I mean, it, it is one of these two. I just, is it, can I get away with Herschel's Compound? That's the question. Or do I need to take this? I think we can get away with the draw. I think we can get away with it. This is extremely greedy, of course, but when am I not extremely greedy? So, we're probably gonna hit this hell vent and look for a good upgrade. Like, look for an upgrade onto one of these demon fiends at this shop and then hit the hell vent. Or I could double, 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 right? But I think we just want a removal. Because if I removal two more cards, right, we have no more dregs. My deck is now always spawning demon fiend, demon fiend, wickless baron host on the middle floor. And with March of Shields, I can order that however I need to. The only thing I have to do is hit Hornbreaker Prince Hidden Passage. Plus, if we get one of the two good hits onto Engulfed and Smoke, this run is an auto win. So yeah. I can't- we, we recovered the Sketches build. It is- it has been a little awkward, but it has recovered. Alright. Yeah, I think we win. This kills the boss. Uh, the amount- the raw damage output should kill the heavies. And the backline should not be that big of a factor. They should also just die. The raw damage output should be enough. Monster Rail Spike. Yo, okay. But like, imagine taking the Monster Rail Spike and just slapping it on a Demon Fiend. I believe if it's played with sketches, it does get removed. It gets purged from the deck. So what I could do is I could put this on Remnant Host. This removes Remnant Host from the deck. And then... I can duplicate Demon Fiend. My middle floor always looks like triple Demon Fiend. That's way better. Yeah, that's actually really sweet. It also makes Remnant Host better for the next combat. Very cool. What a great event there. Wow. Excellent. Again, I just wish that it carried... Like, if Remnant Host carried over the upgrades, right? Those drafts would get insane. Uh, Multi-Strike 1. You're not really the star of this show, Mr. Hornbreaker Prince. However... If, as, as we've talked about many times, I've talked about this one on stream a lot. In the situation where you don't have a way to add multi-strike, it's better to take one multi-strike here. And I'm not really going to get a way to add more multi-strike. If you have a way to add multi-strike, Reaper 3 is the way to go. But we'll take Brawler 1 here. He also gets a little extra survivability in case he has to sit one round on the bottom floor on his own. Wilt Wings are... Uh, 400 coins is worth it. This typically is going to do 30 damage to me on the top floor. The, and maybe, like, it might mess up my middle floor a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. It shouldn't, right? Nice. This is, like, the optimal spawn order here. Oh, yeah. What a what an excellent draw. Wow. This is, like, that's that's perfect, right? If we if we always hit like this, it's it's just, it's absolutely nuts. No, no way, no way about it, right? That's just insane. Go ahead and give you a wick lash. I don't think it changes anything, but I may as well. And the dregs are gonna tank most of the deaths, right? Yeah. Great work, everybody. And we only take 10 for that. Excellent. And it generates more health for our Baron than he lost for it. I don't even need to, like, reshuffle anything. Unfortunately, I do miss this Collector. Nothing I can do about it. 
But that's fine. I'm not so sad about that. And, I mean, I don't... I, I just have the Sunless Pack. This can go... At some point, we can remove it. So we'll be taking, as it appears, we'll be taking one every now and then from the multi-strike lords, and that's okay. Uh, actually, we won't because he gets his first slay in there, and also these waves get easier. It is Wiltwing's combat, though. Good to keep in mind. If only we had a descend, I could like send him up here, get this kill, and then drop him back down. That would be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? But now nah, we're chilling. With holdover stealth, we get to stack this armor forever. It's like, it's... The setup is all that matters, and we can get set up in three turns, which is plenty. Like, that should be absolutely fine. With all the extra draw I took, it should be 100% okay. May as well, uh... No, I may as well not mess with the order here. Letting Hornbreaker Prince get slays is really good. Making sure that hits get tanked is fine. This is the sketches of Salvation Run we were promised in that episode a few days ago. The run that was promised, but a, a promise broken, if you will. So in this run, Reinforce has equated to about the same value as having taken Alloy of Ancients. However, obviously slightly worse. Send you up. If I ascend this guy, we don't get the three health here. It's a minor optimization, but still. Worth considering. Doesn't even come close. Because we have the holdover stealth as well. Diligent, you know, we want to be a little careful. We want to be a little... I don't want to be cocky, but like 11 damage here is pretty clean. Dark deal is kind of a bait. Tiresome climb's cool, but, you know, I guess it's okay to take this. It's, you know, you, 22 cards, you start to go, ah, what if I run out of spells here? And take this. A little, thin out the deck consistency a little bit for... Uh, a little more safety feeling. I think a Sacred Wix. Again, nah, I, I think that's okay. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. You can take it just to add more stuff to hold down the deck, but nah. And then we just go over here. We have $485 to spend. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. I should peep this before I reroll, right? Take a look at the Trinket Merchant. Yeah, this all sucks. And I don't necessarily want to roll this right now. Uh, yeah, so re-roll. There's nothing I want to take of those two. Quick, quick isn't bad, but it's also kind of weird. Give you a plus 25 for a little health buffer. It makes the setup less awkward. Give you a plus 10, why not? The large boy becomes two. This is the large boy, right? Yeah. This one's looking pretty, pretty in the bag here. I think with 265, right? I can, I can't even afford to roll. Rather than remove anything, we will take plus 40 fire health. This should be a pretty clean finish here. Uh, the only thing that can be bad is Hornbreaker Prince not drawing with an Ascend card, and even that's not that big of a deal because we have, uh, we have ways around it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First time Baron hasn't spawned in optimal positioning. Yeah, look at that. It's all A-OK. -okay. Put the Pact away, send up the Hidden Passage, move you forward. All we have left to do now... Oh yeah, we can even ascend this so I never take... I don't even take the first round of Curse here. Nice. All we have left to do now is find a uh, Holdover card. And then we are 100% clean. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, he tanks a bunch of damage, but again, once we find the Holdover card, it's just over. I will... Torch here, and then we're just gonna climb this guy up because moving these guys is neutral. Actually, it's plus three because he's dazed. And as long as I keep uh, not having to take, uh, as long as I keep having to not take curses, right? It's pretty sweet. Occasionally, one of these sneaks by me. That's all right. Interesting. You see, this is where it's like, oh, I'm starting to draw too many of my cards. Uh, we'll we'll play Hornbreak. I'll just take this three. Hornbreak here, March of Shields, and we just start the stealth thing. Because from here, right, we have we have 160 health to work with. That's a lot of health. I can let, like, two of these Gilded Wings walk by me at full capacity and still be okay. I can probably let, like, three of them walk past me. Obviously, we don't want to do that, but I could. If I had a reason to. God, I love this fight music. 
And I, I'm just gonna kind of... Uh, letting these curses accumulate is actually not a good idea. May as well let him go, right? The deck's gonna be very thin. It's gonna start to draw all curses if I'm not careful. Oops, all curses, if you will. Yeah, keep burning torches. I could have... I guess I could have burnt Tiresome Climb there, huh? Or Hidden Passage, just to be able to get the March of Shields in there. Oh, that's interesting. You don't die. I didn't look that closely. Two heavies uh, lets the backline survive. Good to know. Also, my Hornbreaker Prince just triggered slightly twice. Like, it's it's fine. Right? I'm not looking too closely at this round. I'm not being super hyper-analytical about it because... We have this much health. We have this much stealth raw power here. It's hard to see this one getting away from me. It's not impossible, mind you. I could, it's possible, but hard to see it. I'm gonna go ahead and send this guy so I don't take another curse. Just eat the three damage. I'm okay with it. Energy probably would have been a good idea, though. As I look at it now, obviously it would have been a good idea. It's not the end of the world, but it wouldn't have been a bad thing to take. That's round seven right there. Yeah. His armor is not very high because of the Wilt Wings continuously sniping it. But it's okay. Also, I haven't been able to play it because of the energy, right? But the armor doesn't matter, right? The armor is just there in case something goes wrong. We got the hold over stealth. He should be building up armor. However, Wilt Wings have been making that a little more difficult. Hmm. It's a shame. I... I don't know about this turn. I guess, I mean, giving anyone burnout here is bad. So, but I don't, I want this extra two stealth. But if I, so, ah, weird. I suppose we just play engulf and smoke here. But a seven stealth, it should be enough. How much damage are we doing around? 130, 260, five, oh yeah. It's like, it's plenty. Seven stealth is enough. Burning out a unit is actually definitely going to cost me more damage. Let me just kill one of these real quick. Take the five damage, it doesn't matter. Right, I've, I've lost to my own hubris before, but this is a run that looks very difficult to lose from this position. Yeah, that's what I thought. I kind of had a feeling. If you just watch it here. I'm not sure they- because yeah, look at the damage output every round. It's roughly 700 damage a round, right? So it's 1878... 1204. So it's 674 damage a round right now. Which comes out to be enough. Look at that. Didn't even break the stealth. How about it? And there you go. The sketches run that was promised. An actual really good sketches run right there. We got it. I will generate the challenge for you in case you want to play along. And we will call that one good. If only I didn't if only I didn't lose that run last night, we would be on four. If only I didn't lose that last run, we could be on four and I could be going for five at the start of the stream. Shame. That's alright though. Zero gold. How about it? Put a run summary. Go ahead and click uh, generate challenge. Waiting. Loading. There we go. Coffee Deep Link. Hispanic Chicken Human. Huh. <laughs> right on. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.